Hello everyone. So today we're going to look at a nice problem from geometrical limits. Now the question is, if P and Q are two points on the circle, if I join PQ, I'll get a chord. Now this chord subtend an angle theta at the center, that is C. Let's say the center is C. Now A theta and B theta are the following quantities. Now A theta is the area bounded by the arc, this arc and the chord PQ. So A theta represents this much area. Now B theta represents the area bounded by the tangents drawn from the points P and Q. Now if I draw two tangents from P and Q, they'll meet at R point. Now it is the area bounded by the two tangents and the arc PQ. So B theta is this quantity. Now our question is find the value of this limit. Limit theta is tending towards zero. That means the central angle is tending towards zero. A theta upon B theta. So we have to calculate this. Now feel free to pause the video and try this question. I'm going to solve this question in the next slide. Now our objective of the question is to calculate this limit that is theta tending towards zero, A theta upon B of theta. Now A theta and B of theta represents two areas. A theta is the area bounded by the arc and the chord PQ and similarly B of theta is one area. This is shaded region. Now this question is not difficult from a regular limit question. Once I find these two functions, that means A of theta this area in the function of theta and b theta is one more function in the terms of theta. Once I find these two functions, the limit will be very easy to calculate. But first objective is to calculate these two quantities, a of theta and b of theta that I'm going to calculate through diagram. Now, if I join the point C, that is the center of the circle and point R, that is the point where two tangent intersect. So if I join these two points, we know this information that the chord will be bisected at this point and this will be acting as a perpendicular bisector here. This line CR will act as a perpendicular bisector to the chord PQ. Now, one more thing, the triangle PCR, the triangle PCR will be congruent to the triangle RCQ. That means if these two triangles are congruent, these two angles will be same. That means this angle will be theta by two and this angle will be also theta by two. Now one more triangles. Let's talk about PC. Let's say this point where it is perpendicular. Let's say this point is D one more triangle. That is CDP is congruent to CDQ. Once I know this information, I can calculate A of theta and B of theta. Now this length is R radius and this length is also R that is CP and CQ. So using this, I'll be calculating the value of a theta and b theta. So let's start with a of theta. Now a of theta can be written as, see first, the first thing comes in my mind is I can calculate the area of the sector. If I subtract the area of triangle from the sector, I'll easily get the value of a of theta. That is a theta can be written as area of the sector minus area of triangle area of triangle PCQ. Now area of the sector, let's calculate area of the sector first. So I'll use unitary method to calculate the area of the sector. That is for two pi for 360 degree, the area subtended by the chord will be pi r square. Now for theta angle, the area will be pi r square divided by two pi multiplied by theta. Now area of the sector will be pi and pi will cancel out. As I can see here, it will be equal to r square theta divided by two minus now area of the triangle PCQ area of the triangle PCQ. I can write this as twice the area of triangle PCD. Can I write this as twice the area of triangle PCD? Why? Because the triangle PCD PCD and QCD are congruent. That means half into base. Now base of the triangle PCD PCD will be CD is the base and DP is the height. Now CD will be equal to if this is R the radius and the angle is theta by two, as you can see here, then the projection horizontal co projection is R cos theta by two. That is our base and height will be the vertical projection that is multiplied by R sine theta by two. Now if we evaluate this, we'll get this as R square theta divided by two minus I can write this as two sine theta cos theta as sine theta. Okay. So we'll be writing this as R square sine theta divided by two. So this is our area function that is A of theta. 
Now in the next slide, I'm going to calculate B of theta. Once I get these two values, I'll calculate the limit. Now in the previous slide, I have calculated A of theta, that is area function in the terms of theta. Now I have to calculate B of theta in the terms of theta. Once I get all these values, I'll get the value of limit. Now in order to calculate B of theta, I'll be calculating the area of the quadrilateral P, C, Q, and R. Now once I calculate the area of the quadrilateral P, C, Q, R, I'll subtract the area of the sector, which I've calculated earlier. Once I subtract the area of the sector, I'll immediately get B of theta. Now B of theta will be, I can write this as area of quadrilateral, quadrilateral P, C, Q, R minus area of sector. Now to calculate area of P, C, Q, R, I can divide this into two triangles. Now the two triangles are P, C, R and C, R, Q, as you can see C, R, Q. So it is divided into two triangles and as I said previously that these two triangles PCR and QCR are congruent to each other. So I can write this as twice the area of triangle PCR because these two triangles are congruent minus area of the sector previously we have calculated that is R square theta divided by 2. Now let's calculate the area of the triangle PCR. Now it is equal to 2 into half into base. Now it is 90 degree here because it is normal and tangent. So angle between normal and tangent is 90 degree here. Now the base is R and the height is R tan theta by 2. As you can see this is perpendicular and this is theta by 2. So PR will be R tan theta by 2 this length. So base is R, height is R tan theta by 2 minus R square theta divided by 2. Now if I solve this 2 and 2 will cancel out, I'll get this as r square 10 theta by 2 minus r square theta divided by 2. Now I'm going to calculate the limit in the next slide. Now previously we have calculated the area function in the terms of theta that is a of theta and b of theta. Now I'm going to evaluate the limit that is limit theta tending towards 0 a of theta upon b of theta. So I'm going to substitute here that is r square theta divided by 2 minus r square sine theta divided by 2 whole divided by r square tan theta by 2 minus r square theta divided by 2. Now r square r square will cancel out from numerator as well as denominator as I can see here. Now I am going to write the remaining expression that is limit theta tending towards 0. We have theta by 2 or let us say take we will take LCM here. So 1 by 2 outside will be having theta minus sin theta whole divided by tan theta by 2 minus theta by 2. Now I am going to evaluate this limit in the next slide because these two are pretty standard limits and I am going to stand explain the standard limits also. Now previously we have left the limit on this point that is limit theta tending towards 0 theta minus sin theta whole divided by tan theta by 2 minus theta by 2. Although this is 0 by 0 form so I can apply L'Hopital here but I think using expansion I can get the answer early as well as easily. So I am using the standard limits. So these two are the standard limits in sin theta and tan theta. They give you 1 by 6 and 1 by 3. So I am going to prove. Once I prove this, I am going to plug the value of these two limits here. Now you need to have the knowledge of expansion of sin theta and tan theta. So that is the prerequisite for the standard limit. So I am going to explain you first using expansion. So the expansion of sin theta is theta minus theta cube whole divided by 3 factorial plus theta raised to power 5 whole divided by 5 factorial and this sequence goes on. Similarly the expansion of tan theta is theta plus theta cube divided by 3 plus 2 theta raised to power 5 divided by 15 and again the sequence goes on. So I am going to use this expansion in the standard limits and I am going to prove this is 1 by 6 and this is 1 by 3. So let us tackle the first limit, limit theta tending towards 0 theta minus now I am going to put the value of sin theta using the expansion that is theta minus theta cube divided by 3 factorial plus theta raised to power 5 divided by 5 factorial and again the sequence goes on whole divided by theta cube. Now as you can see here theta and minus of theta will cancel out. Now minus of minus is plus theta cube. Again theta cube and theta cube will cancel out. Now 
I'll get this as minus or minus 1 by 3 factorial that is 1 by 3 factorial is 1 by 6 and some other terms. Now in the other terms will contain theta and if theta is tending towards 0 so this term will be 0 next term will be 0 so on up to infinite all the terms are 0 so our value of the fixed limit will be 1 by 6. Similarly I'm going to calculate the second standard limit that is theta tending towards 0 tan theta minus theta upon theta cube. So limit theta tending towards 0 now I'm going to plug the value of tan theta here that is theta plus theta cube divided by 3 plus 2 theta raised to power 5 upon 15 minus theta whole divided by theta cube. Now again you see here theta and minus theta will cancel out and the rest of the terms are as it is here I forgot to mention the bracket. Now theta cube will cancel out with this theta cube okay and the remaining terms will contain theta. So as theta is tending towards 0 the remaining term will be 0 and I'll get the answer will be coefficient of theta cube that is 1 by 3. So I have proved these two limit is 1 by 6 and 1 by 3. Now I'm going to calculate this limit a theta upon b theta, theta tending towards 0 in the next slide. Now previously we have evaluated the standard limits. Now I'm going to calculate our main objective that is limit theta tending towards 0 a theta upon b of theta. So here I observe theta minus sine theta is present. I, all I need is theta cube. So I'm going to divide by theta cube here. So limit as it is theta tending towards 0 half. Now here I need theta cube. So theta minus sine theta whole divided by theta cube. Later on I'm going to adjust this theta cube. Now here whole divided by tan theta divided by 2 minus theta by 2. Now to evaluate this limit I need theta, theta and theta everywhere. Similarly tan theta by 2, theta by 2 and theta by 2 cube should be here in order to evaluate the limit. Now I got the standard limits. The limit will be equal to 1 by 6. This limit will be equal to 1 by 3. Now that I have multi uh, divided by theta cube, I have to multiply by theta cube here. Now here I have divided by theta cube, I have to multiply by theta cube divided by 2 that is 8 here. Now I am going to evaluate the limit that is 1 by 2 is as it is. The limit of this is 1 by 6. Similarly the limit of this part is 1 by 3 and this 8 will come in numerator that is 8 here. Now the final answer is this 3 and 6 will cancel out and we will get 1 by 2 1 by 2 that is multiplied by 8 that is 2. So our final answer is 2 and that will be all.